Okay, I'm gonna give her a call. God bless you. It is 1230. We are going to go ahead and get started with our uh, word on Wednesday, our noonday uh, edition. We thank you so much for joining us um, on today. We thank you so much for your prayers and your support. Um, and so uh, we ask that you would share this and uh, let someone else know that a word on Wednesday has begun. We want to uh, begin with a word of prayer. Uh, God, again, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us. Uh, we don't take it for granted, but we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we pray now, God, as we come before you, uh, we thank you for your word that will come forth um, that continues to give us uh, the encouragement and the direction that we need. Uh, so we pray now for everyone who's uh, watching us virtually. Uh, we pray for their strength, their protection, their guidance. We pray for uh, the families of lost loved ones in Colorado and in Atlanta. We pray uh, for their strength um, and their healing during this uh, very turbulent time. We pray for our country, uh, God, um, for this world in which we live, the pandemic. Uh, we pray for those who've lost loved ones as well. So keep us, God, now with your keeping power and watch over us as we continue to look to you which cometh our help, all of our help comes from you. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We do pray, amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. Uh, we want to continue uh, to talk about today uh, experiencing God's power. Uh, but we want to talk about experiencing God's power in the midst, uh, or rather in your season of battle experiencing God's power in your season of battles. Um, I, I think it is safe to say <clears throat> that uh, many of us, if not all of us know, uh, that we have our seasons uh, of battles, those turbulent times, those times uh, where problems flood our lives. Um, many times unexpected things that we just didn't see coming. Uh, but even in our moments of despair, in the midst of our uh, seasons of battle, uh, battles, uh, know that God is with us, and that God cares exactly uh, for us, and that God will give us the strength that we need in order to move through it. Remember, at the end of the day, are his people um, and he cares for us the word of God encourages us encourages us simply to cast all of our cares upon him for he cares for us no matter where we are in life uh, God will help us and so last week we uh, were able to uh, look at Exodus 17 uh, the verse 7 verses and I want to look at uh, today uh, Exodus 17 verses 8 uh, through 16, the latter part of chapter 17 of the book of Exodus. 
Um, Exodus chapter 17, we talked in depth uh, about how God showed up uh, with a mighty hand and provided water for his people. Uh, God showed up uh, in, with his mighty hand and made, uh, made provisions for them in the wilderness. And so we talk <clears throat> about uh, God's leadership and trusting his leadership. Even while following the Lord's leadership, we will come up short sometimes. And <clears throat> all of us uh, have come up short. No matter where we are in life, we've come up short. And we needed uh, some help. And here Israel, following the Lord's leadership, it was God who brought them out of Egypt. It was God uh, who sheltered them and protected them uh, day and night. And now in chapter 17, uh, we find out that there's no water for them to drink. Now, the text says that they complained to God, or rather they complained to Moses. Uh, but again, their complaint was not against Moses, it was against God. So they complained about where they were, um, but did not recognize that God had them there for a reason. And we stressed on last week, that we should never complain about where we are because many times God is setting us up for something much bigger and we need that experience along the way. We need that experience. Uh, we need to know what it feels like to run out of resources. We need to know sometimes what it feels like uh, not to have anyone to lean and depend on. There are times when God will remove some things out of our way so that way we can see him and trust him even in the dark even when our back is up against the wall even when we're faced uh, with negative situations even in our seasons of battles uh, we must trust the lord so god provided for him. Uh, god told moses simply i'm going to give water to my people and he told them what to do carry the rod with you get the elders i want them to be eyewitnesses as to what I'm getting ready to do um, so that they will see how I work even in the dark. Even when there's no water, even when the resources have run out, uh, at the end of the day, I am still God, and they need to recognize that. And that's what you and I must do today, that even in our seasons of struggle, when we're faced with an unexpected battle, uh, our faith must work even in the dark. Even when we don't see our way through, even when we don't understand why we are there, our faith must work in the dark. And we've got to tell ourselves that. We've got to encourage our own selves with the word of God, the same God who brought us out of tribulation, that brought us out of harm's way. Uh, I must trust his leadership and wherever he guides me, uh, I will follow. So God provided water for his people. They were able to experience water flowing from an unusual place. And we, know, we never know where our blessings are going to come from. We never know who God is going to touch. We never know where our next blessing is going to come from. That's why you and I must trust his leadership and trust what he's doing in our lives. So God allowed water to flow from a rock, an unusual place, uh, to, permit, to make provisions for his people. And I'm, listen, I'm, I'm uh, talking to some people who's listening to me today who can witness that God has blessed you from some unusual places, from some unusual people. Yes, even your enemies. God has laid on their hearts to bless you today. Remember, at the end of the day, God is God. And he's got all by himself. He knows exactly what he's doing. But in our text today, Israel now is faced with an unusual, I'm sorry, an unexpected battle. In a place of rest, repidim, now it becomes a place of war. Um, I, I want to share this with you. Verses uh, 8, uh, 9, 10. Exodus chapter 7, uh, we must understand while following the Lord's leadership, 
we will have to face unexpected battles. While following the Lord's leadership, I, we talked about last week, our resources will run low. But also we must understand while following the Lord's leadership, we will be faced with unexpected battles. But here, 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 here's what I really want to press. And if you read um, in your leisure verses 8 uh, through 16, we find this out. That yes, while following the Lord's leadership, we are faced with unexpected battles, but our battles turn into places of victory when God is in the midst. That's good news for us on today, that our places of battle, our battlefield experiences are turned into places of victory when God is in the midst. God wants the glory. God will get the glory out of your places um, of battle. Those places can be turned into places of victory. Notice in the text, the text says verse number 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Repidim. Verse 9, and Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with, a rod, with the rod of God in my hand. Verse 10, so Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Verse 11, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. I'm going to stop right there <clears throat> and share with you some uh, important uh, points. <clears throat> um, we, we must fight the Lord's way. We must fight the Lord's way. God has a way for us to fight. And I know that there are times when we're in the midst of our personal battles that we've already kind of figured out how uh, we're going to get out of this and uh, again as I said on last week we begin to set up resources um, only to find out that's not the way God wants it to work that our plans we must scrap our plans because we must fight the Lord's way God already gives us battlefield instructions Instructions. Even when we, are, when we are faced with unexpected battles, God gives us battlefield instructions. And so many times in the history, uh, the life of Israel, wandering in the wilderness, God told them many times, don't do anything. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to fight because I got this. And so somebody needs to hear that today, that even in the midst of our unexpected battles, battles we must fight the Lord's way because at the end of the day he's got us we, we got to believe that we got to have faith that God has us and so they fought with uh, Amalek uh, Joshua goes out and chooses men Moses says tomorrow I'm going to stand on top of the hill so Moses is on the top of the hill, and the text says, verse number 11, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. When he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Here's what we must do. When we are in our seasons of battles, when we are faced with unexpected battles, we must hold the Lord up. We must lift his word up. We must... Lift him up in every situation. Moses had the rod in his hand, which, which is a symbol of God's power and authority. That same rod that he struck the rock and water flowed from, he now stands on top of the mountain with the rod of God in his hands. So no matter where we are, we must lift, lift, lift God up. Lift him up for and lifting him up, we receive power. When we lift him up, there's victory. When we lift him up, others will know that we have someone with us who's able and capable of handling our situations. 
But also, this text teaches us today not only to fight the Lord's way, not only hold up the Lord, but this text teaches us that there's victory in your fight. There's victory in your fight. Um, when we follow uh, the Lord's way, we follow his battlefield instructions, we follow his plan. Remember, there's always victory. Because when we do it the Lord's way, he's already factored in how he's going to bring us through. We're human beings, and so sometimes, sometimes we just don't understand. But, 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 but it's all about faith, moving in faith, acting on our faith, God, that, yes, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but as long as God is with me, as long as he is in the midst, as long as God is leading me, there must be victory. There must be victory. And I know the enemy will have us to think that no matter where we are, we're already defeated. No, no matter where we are, we, we're already outnumbered. These, these Amalekites, these bullies who would just uh, jump out of nowhere and attack strangers and those who are traveling through uh, now had beef with Israel. And this, this beef went back years. And so now Israel is in the midst of a battle with Amalek. God gives battlefield instructions. There's victory in your fight. There's victory in your battles. We must stand on God's word and believe in his power and his authority over our enemy. Regardless of what our enemy looks like, trust God's power and his authority. No matter what situation is before us, we must trust God's power and his authority. He just showed Israel. He just showed his manservant Moses and in the eyes of the elders that he can bring water out of a rock. So if God can bring water out of a rock, surely he can handle our enemies. There are times we forget because of what the problem looks like or how big the problem is. And I'm here to tell you on today that there's no problem that's too big. There's no situation so grave that God cannot handle. And I'm speaking to someone listening on this live today. You're dealing with an unexpected battle. Others are whispering in your ear in so many words, you're already defeated. Can I tell you on today, that's, that's a lie. The enemy will tell lies. Some of your so-called friends will tell lies. But you have to remind them that victory belongs to me. Because I gave this battle. I gave this situation over to the Lord. He's already given me battlefield instructions. I still have to go through it. And in going through, I experience God's power and his authority even over my enemies. We ought to see that today. Not only presently in our lives, but also in the past. Because what God has done for us in the past, what he's doing for us present, will be helpful for what we go through in the future. Battles are part of our walk with the Lord. We must experience pain. We must experience turmoil. We must experience unexpected trouble. For in doing so, our faith ought to kick in. And we trust God to help us through those unexpected situations. So we got to fight the Lord's way. Whatever battlefield instructions he has given us on today, we have to follow those instructions. And I know sometimes he gives it to us, and to us it may not seem like enough. Uh, but, but, but God's grace is sufficient. We need not worry about filling our roster 
full of people because all we need is the Lord and, and today God gives the increase even with, with one or two we must put it in his hands so the text says as long as Moses held up his hands Israel prevailed Moses got a little tired if you continue to read verse number 12 but Moses hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat there on and Aaron and her stayed up his hands the one on one side and the other on the other side his hands were steady until the going down of the sun get this we must fight the Lord's way we must hold the Lord up remember victory is in the fight but we also must be confident that he who is in the midst is greater than any enemy which we may encounter on our journey. I'll say that again. Be confident that he who is in the midst of our battle, in the midst of our fight, is greater than any enemy which we may encounter on our journey. God who's in the midst of our battles is greater than any enemy. I don't care what it is. I don't care who comes against you. God who's in the midst of my situation is greater. And we have to believe that today. We have to reassure ourselves and give ourselves encouragement that God is greater than my circumstance. Say that on today to yourself. Say it out loud. Say it while driving down the street in your car. When you wake up in the morning, God is greater than my circumstance. And I believe that today he's greater than any circumstance that I will encounter, any situation that I will encounter in this life. But remember also that God <clears throat> is capable of meeting the needs of his people. God is capable of meeting the needs of his people. Through the wilderness journey, God met the needs of his people. When they were hungry, he fed them. When they were thirsty, and this was not the only time in the scripture, in, in the wilderness, that they came up thirsty. But here in chapter 17, there was no water for them to drink in their current location, and God provided for them. He provided food. He's capable of meeting the needs of his people. He provided food. He provided water. He provided shelter. He provided protection from their enemies and God is doing so in verses 8 through 16 he now shows up in a mighty way we must also look at this because in our personal battles as we deal with our uh, unexpected uh, seasons of battle get this we become weary many times in wartime. In the midst of wartime, we become weary. We, we know not how long when we're in the battle, how long we're going to be in the fight. And it's possible to become weary at wartime. We get tired. Care how spiritual you are, how long you've been walking with the Lord, we become tired. But we also must remember that God is with us, but, but um, we need support from our other brothers and sisters who's walking along with us as well. It's good to have a good support system around you, a good praying support system around you. Stop saying you don't need anybody because that's a lie. We all need somebody. We all need someone with a listening ear. We all need someone 
get this, who will lift us up when we are weary. Because get this, at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. We may have differences of opinions. We have differences in gifts. But we're all on the same team. Aaron and her are on the same team with Moses. And so when their leader was, has become weary at wartime, it was their responsibility to lift his hands up. We all need that spiritual support system. We all need that spiritual support system. Someone who will speak life. Someone who will pray for us. Someone who will give us an encouraging word. Even when we messed up. They're on the same team. The text does not say that they fussed at Moses. Or they walked away from Moses. But they recognize we're on the same team fighting the same enemy. And if we're going to get through this together, we've got to help our brother, our leader out. The body of Christ needs more of that. We're on the same team. Serving the same God. And that just like Moses got tired, we will get tired too. And we too need that spiritual support system that will help get us through our unexpected seasons of battle. And so they, they were able to experience God's power when he provided water. And even now, they experience God's power in battlefield situations. But, but here's what I like. The text says Moses' hands were heavy and Aaron and her, they stayed up his hands to the going down of the sun. Here, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Here's what God uh, did through um, his people, Joshua, who led this army, defeated Amalek. He discomfited. He took them apart with the edge of the sword. God was leading them. God gave them instruction. God's power prevailed. And here's what I like, and this is the last <clears throat> final point. That you, know, you and I must always remember that when God brings us through our situations, when God shows up, we must always remember who rescued us. Remember your rescue. Look at what Moses told him. He says, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Joshua, for I will utterly put out remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. God's promise. But here's what Moses did. To remember what God had done. So that the people will not forget. Always remember what God has done for you. Always remember his rescue. How he rescued you. Here's what Moses did. He built an altar. and called the altar. He called the altar Jehovah Nissi which literally means Lord is my banner. So Moses was reminding the people and letting the people know it was under God's banner. It was under his power. It was under his leadership. He took out our enemy. So don't you ever forget who rescued you. The Lord is my banner. The Lord has fought for you. You have fought under his banner, under his power. We must always remember the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Look at what he says in verse 16. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Let God fight your battles. It's in his hands. We fight under his power. We fight under his authority. God makes provisions for us. And I know I'm not the only one who has experienced God's power in the midst of unexpected battles. The richness and the blessing that flows from experiencing God's power. You see him work in your life. You see him in unexpected places provide for you. You've seen him come out and give you battlefield instructions how to deal with it. He does not remove us from the battle, but he gives us the strength 
to persevere. He does not remove us from the battle, but he gives provisions on how to go through. And that's what, all, what, what you and I are doing on today. We're just going through. But we can't do it without the Lord's help. We're just going through. We need each other's support and prayers. We need someone to lift us up. And God will drop us right in the midst of situations, right in the midst of unexpected uh, battles so that you and I can experience his power and his authority over our enemy, over our situation. We must faith our way through. And God will get the Remember always to give him the glory. Uh, that's all we have for today for our word on Wednesday. Again, we thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, and we ask that uh, you join us again at 6.30 on tonight. If something you missed, you can always come back and see it at uh, 6.30. And so we praise God for your support. We praise God uh, for you. And so we want to pray for your families and we want to pray for your safety as we continue to navigate through uncharted territories, faithing our way through, knowing God is able to take care of us. So let us pray. God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. God, we thank you for your word that has given us the encouragement that we need. And no matter what battle we are in the midst of, God trusts you. Faith our way through it. We thank you for not removing us from it, but uh, allowing us to experience what we have experienced. Allowing us to see First hand your hand move in all of our lives. So bless us now, God, as we uh, dismiss now from this particular service. Bless everyone who's on this live stream and keep us now until we're able to meet again. God, we love you, we thank you, and we do praise you. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. God bless you.